morning everyone. My name's Yvonne. Welcome to Sniff, soap making with natural ingredients. The idea of today's video is to help those that have never made soap before. Um, I'm going to show you a very, very simple recipe and method and I hope that you enjoy this process and that it, it inspires you to give this a go. Um, so I'll just very briefly run through what I'm doing and you can watch the process. I hope it helps you. In my jug here I have pre-measured my oils and I just have a very basic um, mix of olive and coconut oil just to keep it very very simple 75% olive oil 25% coconut oil. From the olive oil I'm going to add a very simple infusion that I've made. Uh, this is a paprika in olive oil infusion. So all I've done is taken a jar, I have filled the jar, well half full, with olive oil because I only need uh, 75 grams for my recipe so I've got more than what I need and I put into, let's say there's about um, 250 grams of olive oil in there. I have put about 20 grams of um, organic paprika powder. Um, paprika is red as you know and from this infusion I hope to get a lovely orange colour in my soap. Um, so I prepared this yesterday. I did heat it so measure out your olive oil in a jar put 20 grams of paprika into that give it a good shake around I actually removed the, the cap and I just put it in my microwave and I heated it for a good minute um, which made the oil quite hot gave it a good shake around and I've just let this sit overnight um, it can sit for as long as you want that's just a very very simple oil infusion in olive oil and I'm now going to use a portion of that in my uh, oil mix. Um, so I'll just check. Um, when you do videos with me, you see all my bloopers and they're all a la naturale. So hopefully you'll enjoy that because you see things as they really are. <laughs> I'll just check my recipe. <coughs> So I was very wrong, I need 150 grams. So I have this, um, it's a glass jug that I'm going to mix in simply because you'll be able to see what's happening through the jar. Um, so I'll just measure the rest into that. So in goes my infusion. Now notice overnight, I don't know if you can see that, but the paprika has actually settled to the bottom. And I'm not going to shake the jar up again. I'm a lazy soap maker. And if you want to strain it, you can. But I just find this is easy. Um, after the infusion, it's just settled to the bottom. And I can just very easily pour the um, oil from the top that's been coloured, leaving the um, paprika sitting on the bottom so it's not all mixed into it. So we want 150. Just enough. So <laughs> that was a good guess, wasn't it? You have to ensure that you have done enough to start with if your recipe calls for 150 grams of the oil um, at least do say 220 so that you know you've got enough and I won't throw that out I'll fill that up again with olive oil give it a good shake about and let it sit for another couple of days and use it again so always label your infusions so that you remember what you've done So you can see that that has coloured my oil. It's very exciting, isn't it? I hope it works. 
So I've just popped my oils down here and I'll make up our lye. So there's my water that I need for the lye. It's 190 grams. I'm only doing a half kilo batch. I like experimenting and there's no point uh, doing a big batch if it's an experiment. Um, and you'll appreciate that too if you're making soap at home. You don't necessarily need to make a huge amount of it. So to mix the lye, notice what I'm using. These are polypropylene basically takeaway containers. Just ensure on the bottom you'll see a triangle with PP5 in it. And those are safe to use for soap making. My water is already measured there. It's 190 grams of water. And the recipe for this I will post in the comments below so that you can give this a try. Here's my caustic soda. Now when you mix your caustic soda, nothing nasty is going to happen other than fumes and heat. So whatever you do this in needs to be with, uh, able to withstand that. So to make this easy, a stainless steel bowl is perfect. Something made out of polypropylene is perfect. I don't like to use glass for mixing the lye because the heat can actually shatter the, um, the glass. So just a, just a be wary of glass. I don't, don't particularly like it for soap making. So something that you can throw out is just fine. Um, you'll find that most ice cream buckets are made out of polypropylene. So that makes things easy, doesn't it? Just check. You're looking for a triangle on the bottom of the container, PP5 in it. Or a stainless steel bowl. That makes it really easy. So when you're going to mix your lye, I like to always have gloves on, a mask and goggles. Now that doesn't have to be fancy. I'm wear, I wear glasses for doing most of my work at the moment. A simple pair of safety glasses. Put these over the top of your glasses if you wear glasses because you can actually damage your glasses. So they're on. And what I like to do is measure the water in one container, the caustic soda in another container, and then take it to wherever you feel happy mixing your lye. And I do recommend doing this outside. That way you've got no risk of breathing any of the fumes. For the purpose of this video only, I'm going to do it right here so that you can see what's happening. Because if you've never made soap before, this will be a concern to you, but don't let it be. It's quite simple. Follow the safety precautions and you'll be fine. So at this point, I just put on a safety mask just to help me not breathe any fumes that may be created. Make sure you've got gloves on. And if you want to be ultra fussy, wear an apron as well. Um, it's up to you how careful you want to be when making your soap, but the minimum is gloves, goggles and a mask okay take the caustic soda and just gently pour it into the water give a good shake around so that you make sure there's nothing left in the bottom of the container Take a stirrer, it needs to be silicon rubber or stainless steel. Give it a mix. Make sure there's no crusty bits sitting on the bottom of the container that can, uh, you know, they won't dissolve if they've crusted onto the bottom. And just make sure that it has combined properly. Initially it will be cloudy. That's okay. Immediately a lot of heat is formed. And fumes are coming off the top of that. You probably can't see that in the video. So that's all you need to do. Then I take that container and put it either outside or near an open door or window so that the fumes can escape. Once it's done its uh, initial reaction, the liquid will go clear. It's very, very hot in there and we need to wait for that to cool down. So I'll just put that out of the way for a moment.
So a thermometer comes in very handy when you're making soap. We'll check the temperature of our oils. All of the oils, the water, the lye, everything you put into your soap needs to be weighed out very carefully, not by measure. So this is my set of big scales. You can also use a smaller set of digital kitchen scales that, that work quite well. Whatever it is, I like to um, make sure that everything is measured very, very well and added to your oil pot in the correct sequence. Um, so all of my oils are in here ready to go, including the infused oil for this soap because I'm just playing around to see what colour I can get from paprika. So now we need to wait for the lye to cool down. In the meantime, let's just have a look at what the temperature of our oils are. Before we started, I needed to melt down my shea butter. I do have a 50 gram uh, super fat in here of shea butter. And a super fat just means that it is additional oils that I've added to the soap to make it more nourishing. You'll find the recipe below. So you can use these candy thermometers, very, very easy, inexpensive. You can buy them in most uh, kitchen shops. Or if you're going to do some serious soap making, you might like to use an infrared digital thermometer. Uh, I make a lot of soap and creams and all sorts of things. So um, I find this little tool absolutely invaluable. When you turn it on, it gives you a digital reading there. You can select whether it is in Celsius or Fahrenheit and it just makes life really quick and easy. So the temperature of our oils is 32. That's okay. I'm just removing my goggles there for a minute. The temperature of our lye is actually 73. So I'm just going to leave these things uh, be. We'll chat about something else for a minute because we're basically waiting for that lye to cool down. You could hurry it up, put it in a, a, a you know a larger a sink of cold water and cool it down a lot quicker. Better still, I've done this today with room temp water. If you actually weigh out the equivalent, same weight, with ice cubes so in that container just weigh out 190 grams of ice cubes and mix your lye or caustic soda into the ice cubes it doesn't get anywhere near as hot and it's ready to use much quicker so it's totally up to you which way you do it I'll just explain what else I've got here for you uh, I've got I'm sending this recipe at um, 3% so 3% of 500 grams is 15 hope I've done that right so I've got a little blend of essential oils here that I'm going to use uh, in here I have uh, 10 grams of Palmarosa 3 grams of orange sweet and 2 grams of Letzia um, so Yummy. It's a really lovely citrusy um, blend that should be really nice in this soap. A really good tip is to place your uh, scent in the mould and that way you've got no chance of forgetting that you need to add that to your soap before pouring. Just a good little tip that one of the ladies mentioned in the group just recently. Um, so I'll go and get our essential oil from up the end and we'll continue with this process. Oh, one more thing. Um, once we've poured our soap into this mould, um, I'm just going to pour off a small amount into another jug. Um, and I'm going to add some uh, zinc oxide that I've mixed in a tiny little bit of water um, just to um, create a little bit of interest on the top of the soap. So I thought it'd be nice to do a few white swirls. Um, making it look 
a little bit interesting on the top. So zinc oxide in a little bit of water, so four teaspoons of zinc in a tiny bit of water, and we might not use all of that. We'll just add what we need to create a, um, a different colour. So that's there, and I have a jug just here that I'm going to pour a little bit into to do that with. So I'll go and get our caustic soda now. So we'll just check the temperature of that. So it's at 48 degrees. So I am so soaping slightly cooler today. Um, you don't have to have the temperatures of these exactly the same. My oils are at 30. So by the time I add the caustic soda into the oils, they're going to find uh, you know, their own temperature but it will be under 50 degrees and that's just the temp that I like to soap. Technology, don't you hate it? My, my phone cut out. All you've missed is me pouring the lye into the jug and I'm now going to mix it with my stick mixer. Stick mixer is much better. It will bring you to trace much quicker. Um, so I highly recommend buying yourself one to do this. So just give a couple of quick bursts. Can't believe what's just happened. I'm hating my phone at the moment. It's um, getting quite full and I've had to delete quite a lot of things to be able to record any more videos. And you've just missed the most important part, I suppose. Um, so what I did, you saw me give the soap a couple of quick mixes and that was actually enough and then I added my essential oil blend and I just stirred it by hand with my stirrer um, and poured it into the mold that I have here so here it is in the mold I've just used a square mold and it's gone in there so I did pour off the little bit that I wanted to colour uh, a little bit lighter to create a, a swirl on the top so I'll give that another quick mix just to agitate that again and I'll pour a little bit into that jug and give it a quick mix so I just want to put this in on top of the soap just to create a little bit of a pattern of a contrasting colour And I'm just going to drop, drizzle it in on the top, uh, which I know you can't see. So I'll lift that up a little bit higher. There you are. And I'm just literally going to drizzle that on the top. Just random. do and now I'll just take a skewer and swirl that around in there no particular pattern or way just to create some swirls Here's our soap in my oven. I like to ensure that my soap goes through a gel stage because I feel that the colours will be much brighter. So I have placed the mould, it's a silicon mould, I have placed it on a timber chopping board that I use for this. I've preheated the oven to 50 degrees Celsius. I'm going to now close the door, mind my oven it's a big mess and I'm going to turn the oven off so all I'm doing is keeping the oven at that temperature ensures that the soap stays warm and it helps it to gel 
So I'll leave that in there now until the oven is completely cold and then I'll remove the soap and cut it for you.